Oh, I don't need to break something. I think that's my elbow. I think that's my elbow on your muffin. I think I've elbowed your muffin. How can I make this right? Right, I'm going to have to elbow everyone's muffins and make it an even playing field. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 awkward moments on the Great British Bake Off. I love these hanging nuts. I had to put three on there for obvious reasons, yes. What are you doing? I'm still baking. Still in the oven? Yeah. What? Mm. If you need any more time, I do do the time call, so I could cheat for us, <laughs> OK? You need a jug. Jug, jug anyone? Is this big enough? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at Bake Off moments that were nothing short of cringeworthy. Which Bake Off moment still makes you shudder? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Mel's Masala Mix-Up. That your dough, Nancy. That's my dough. While Mel was often seen tucking into Baker's delicious treats, she learned that maybe sometimes it's worth asking them first. As the judges talk to eventual Season 5 winner Nancy Birthwistle, we're a little distracted watching Mel as she sprays what she thinks is masala wine straight into her mouth. Her reaction, however, tells us it's something far less appetizing, and it's kind of funny to watch as she struggles to maintain composure, despite her discovery that it was actually sunflower oil. <laughs> I thought that was the masala. <laughs> it's oil. While Mary and Paul continue to do the rounds, Mel tries to avoid gagging on national television. Number 9. Gusset Gate During Alternative Ingredients Week, Paul Jagger decided to decorate his showstopper with a sunbathing bikini-clad fondant woman. We can't have her going out on the beach like that. She'll get arrested. As the presenters pointed out to him, he neglected to give her bikini bottoms a gusset, but had actually included a completely different feature instead. Not only did the word gusset seem to elicit giggles, but we also had to watch him give his fondant figurine the snip. It's the gusset. <laughs> While the judges did praise his delightful flavour combination, it was overshadowed by what became Gusset Gate. Also, watching Paul cut into his cake with perhaps a little too much delight was kind of weird too. Oh, please. No, Paul, no! No! Oh, Paul. Oh. No way. Number 8. Dip your what now? As any Bake Off fan would tell you, the show has become famous for its countless innuendos from the classic and numerous soggy bottoms to other more explicit comments such as So this will go into that hole yeah. and the juice will go down like a drizzle. Caramel Week in particular seemed to lend itself perfectly to baking double entendres and as we will see later, it's not just the one baker who fell into the trap either. However, as James Hillary explained how he planned on tackling his showstopper, he informed the judges about his plans for his, um, nuts. I think I can cheat a little bit with a spun sugar in that I can dip my nuts and then use the leftover to do the spinning. So. Sandy's quick wit fired back that perhaps he was oversharing, while Paul couldn't help but chime in either. I don't think you should say dip <laughs> yeah. your nuts on television. Certainly not in caramel. <laughs> but thank you anyway. <laughs> thank you very much. Number seven, Noel hides in the fridge. Right, so you've got four and a half hours on your marks. Get set. Bake. The presenters always look for new and comedic ways to do a time call, but it seems on this occasion they missed the mark. While Sandy opened the fridge to find Noel inside, viewers were outraged by how irresponsible and dangerous this move was. Bakers, you are halfway through your challenge. Halfway through. It also didn't help when Channel 4 tweeted, just when you thought Noel Fielding couldn't get any cooler. Ofcom received numerous complaints from furious viewers, but ultimately the decision was made not to investigate further. This was a frostier response than they clearly anticipated, and we imagine that they will probably think twice in future. Three, two, one, go. Bakers, you got five minutes left. Number six, the whole brownie challenge. You can't produce a decent chocolate brownie, there's going to be problems. The bakers were left with egg on their face after an embarrassingly failed attempt to tackle one of Bake Off's easiest tasks. What are you doing? I'm still baking. Still in the oven? Yeah. What? Mm. If you need any more time, I do do the time call, so I could cheat for us, <laughs> OK? In fact, Paul even warned them that this was one of the most basic things you can bake, almost as if he predicted just how bad things would go. But viewers were left baffled when pretty much everyone failed to whip up a decent batch of brownies. Looks like an actual car crash. 
The bakers confessed that they had overcomplicated the task while neglecting the basic elements of a nice gooey brownie. On reflection, even they had to admit that this was not their finest moment. That was brutal. I mean, brownies. What are people watching this going to think of us? Number five, custard gates. I've got to make that into puff custard, and uh, I've got two types of caramel to make, so, yeah. Mm. No Bake Off fan will ever forget this moment or be able to think about it without cringing just a little. In what Sue Perkins called either a terrible error or the most incredible case of baking espionage, Deborah looked genuinely mortified and gutted as she revealed what had just happened. Where's my custard? Oh no! I'm so sorry, Howard. Howard was forced to use her runnier batch instead, but fortunately the judges agreed to critique the custard separately. Although Deborah was still given the boots, she described her time on the show as a cascade of misery, and we imagine that Custard Gates was most likely the final straw. I'm sure that one custard's as good as another. Number four, Sura knocks Dave's cakes. Bakers, your time is up. All my cream is fell off. While season 11's first technical challenge was uneventful, one unprecedented visitor in the tent quickly changed all that. Sura noticed a pesky fly hovering over her upside down pineapple cakes and swatted it away. What she hadn't noticed though was that Dave was right behind her, and in one swift move, she sent his cakes crashing to the ground, probably eliciting audible gasps across the nation. Oh no! Oh, go away! Oh. <gasps> no! As with many of Bake Off's infamous moments, viewers headed to social media to jokingly call a sabotage. It also didn't take long until it became a meme, with many suggesting it was a fitting metaphor for 2020. Don't worry about I'm it, it's so fine. I'm, just, I'm sure they can go by what they looked like before I brought them over. Number three, yet another innuendo. Is this big enough? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> As we said earlier, Caramel Week was inundated with double entendres, adding to the ever-grown collection of Bake Off innuendos. One of the highlights, though, came from Stacy's The Very Hungry Caterpillar-inspired showstopper. While attempting to illustrate the life cycle of a butterfly through her caramel creation, she wasn't particularly satisfied with how it turned out, which led her to declare, It's not as much of an erection as I wanted it to be. Viewers did not miss a beat in taking to Twitter to make jokes about Stacey's ill-thought-out comments. Perhaps her caramel spun dessert failed to rise to the occasion, but at least she got through to the following week. It's not working. Right, my gorgeous bakers, you have one minute. Please don't forget that your spun sugar must be on your cake. Number two, Bin Gates. It's a mess, disaster, it's revolting. You probably don't need to be a Bake Off viewer to have heard of this particular incident. During a Baked Alaska challenge, Diana removed Ian's dessert from the freezer to put her own in and seemingly forgot to return his after. Okay, bakers, 15 minutes, please. 15 minutes. Where's my ice cream? It's here. Sorry, Ian. We, we uh... Well, that, you've got your own Someone freezer, haven't freezer. you? Sue insisted that it had been out of the freezer for about 40 seconds, but not everyone was convinced and Diana received a lot of hate for it. Still, whether you believe it was deliberate or not, it was Ian's reaction that left us all in stunned silence. No, 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 come And with nothing to present to the judges, he was eliminated that week. Number one, no spoilers, please. As we've seen, Bake Off fans are very passionate about the show, which unfortunately Prue learned the hard way during her first season as a judge. Were you drunk? No, I wasn't. <laughs> she was on holiday in Bhutan as the finals prepared to air, but after miscalculating the time difference, she prematurely congratulated the winner via Twitter. Viewers were shocked and even angered by this blunder, leaving Prue reportedly in too much of a state to talk about it. Of course, the tweet was quickly deleted, but by this point, the damage had been done. Needless to say, Prue would not be making the same mistake ever again. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.